Now we need to connect a course has a prereq relationship. And this is going to go a course has a prerequisite course. So there's going to be two connecting lines that go through this relationship. One, both of them go to a course. So here we have one here and we'll do it again. And this time we'll connect it again. So two connecting lines to a single course. I know I said to fuss with it just a little to get it the way I want it to be, right? <clears throat> so now we can say CS 1400 has a prereq CS 1030, right? And we can say CS 1030 is a prerequisite to CS 1400. Notice how it can go both directions. It's the same relationship. We use a little bit of terminology depending on which direction we're going. That's just the same as all the others. A section is based on a course. A course has many sections. So the, how you do it, the words here can be different depending on which direction you're going. You just pick one that you're going to identify. Now we need to decide the multiplicity. So let's go see if it says here. So it says a course can have one or more prerequisite courses. So this kind of looks like one to many. But then we think about, well, CS 1030 doesn't have any prereqs. So we have a course with zero. So how come does this say one to many uh, rather than zero to many? So we have to go back a little bit further and say can have, but doesn't say that it must have. So it can have one or more, but it's not required to have. So we understand that it's possible for a course to have zero. Again, this comes from our understanding and we can validate it here and uh, and see that it can have one or more, but it's not required to have one or more. So this one, we want it to be zero to many. So a course can have zero to many prereqs. That's right there, right? So CS 1030 has zero prereqs. CS 1400 has one prereq. Course CS 30, I don't know, 3550 has many prereqs. Okay, so that's how that end works. Now, what about the other way? So the other way is 1400 can have how many prereqs? So the other way would be 1400 can be a prereq for how many courses? And that one's not specified in there before. So could 1400 be a prereq for 1410? Yes. <clears throat> could it also be a prereq for 2350? Yes. Could it be not a prereq for anything? And we know 1400 is, has, is a prereq for some courses, but we can think of other courses not being a prereq for anything. So maybe CS 3550 is not a prereq for anything. So we can see that it could be zero and we see that it could be more than one. So that gives us the zero to many. So this end needs to be zero to many too, but that's not at all specified in the scenario. Okay, so let's go ahead and specify our assumptions on this one. So we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and add two assumptions on this one. A course can have zero to many prereqs. It is possible to have a course with no prereqs. Okay, and that just clarifies that one, even though we can kind of get it from the words themselves, that really clarifies it, right? Because we're really specifying this can have one or more. So we can also say it is possible for a course with to have a course with no prerequisite. All right, and then that, so that's this one, a course has zero prerequisites. So that's this one right here. And then seven would be a course can be a prerequisite for zero to many courses. And on this one, we need to specify both, right? It is possible. not to be a prereq for any course 
And it is also possible, it is possible for a course to be a prereq for multiple courses. Okay, so there we have fully defined that relationship between a course and a course. And the relationship is has a prereq. And notice how that goes to the same entity. And we fully defined it and put the assumptions for clarification.